What's up everybody? Welcome to Kodum Chaim. In this week's video, we're going to take a look at web workers. Now, instead of me actually taking the time to kind of give you guys a bit of an introduction about what web workers are, I think it'll be a lot more uh, helpful for you guys to actually see the problem that web workers are trying to solve. So let's take a look at the code right away. As you can see here, I have a very simple HTML file that just renders two buttons and then two H1s. So the one button here has an ID of work button. The other one has just an ID of button. Then we've got an ID that just has, or an H1 that has an ID of random. And then we have another H1 that has the ID of output. So let's see how this is getting used in our script. And so as you can see, what we have is we're pretty much, we have an event listener that's being attached to our work button, which is this work button right over here. And then what we're doing inside of this event listener, when somebody actually goes ahead and clicks on that button, we're pretty much setting off some sort of intense work. Of course, this is a very contrived example because you wouldn't really ever, ever have any real reason to kind of do this in a real life application. But I'm just trying to illustrate something that happens when you're in a JavaScript application that's being run in the browser and what web workers are trying to solve. So what's happening here is we basically start off with the variable that's uh, called final. We initialize that to zero. We then have a for loop that goes over an exaggerated amount of times. And every single time the for loop runs, we're pretty much appending the actual value of i to final. So therefore, we're just sort of adding up the actual value of final. Finally, once all that work is done, we then grab our output h1 and we take the value of final and we append it to the HTML so we can actually go ahead and display that on screen. Now, the idea here is as follows. Given the fact that um, JavaScript is single threaded, right? So therefore, what's gonna end up happening is as the browser is busy actually going to output all of this or actually compute all this data, anything else that you're gonna to try to do within your browser was basically going to freeze the browser. So essentially, while this work is happening, if I try to go ahead and click on the other buttons, remember we have two buttons in this HTML. One of them is actually going to go ahead and kick off the other work, and the other one is simply just trying to go ahead and display a simple message that's just going to say random on screen. But the problem is, given the fact that JavaScript is single threaded, and right now the main thread is actually being sort of bogged down with all this computationally expensive work, we won't actually have the ability to go ahead and click on this button and see the output. So let me demonstrate that right now. So I've already got um, my little HTTP server running over here. So the app is already running. Let's go ahead into the browser and actually demonstrate the problem. Okay, so as you can see, we are now in the browser. Let me go ahead and kick off the work. I'm gonna go ahead and press on the click beam button. And now, as you can see, if I'm gonna to try to click on this, you can actually notice that it isn't even showing up that we're trying to click on it. In other words, typically, you see a small little indentation that happens, a little something that kind of shows that the button's getting clicked. In this case, we get nothing. Now, finally, once the actual work is done, we actually get the output of what final is equal to now. Now we actually get the value of random. And we actually see that the message of random is getting outputted. So of course, the problem here is if obviously, if let's say you ever have some sort of computationally expensive work that you're trying to do within the browser, say you're trying to parse a CSV file or something along those lines, the problem is you're pretty much going to end up freezing up your UI because of course, JavaScript is single threaded. Therefore, it can't do both things at the same time. If it's busy with something that's going to be blocking, then any other sort of interaction that the user might take while the work is happening is simply not going to work. It's gonna seem as though the browser is frozen. So using web workers, we can go ahead and solve this problem. So let me show you that right now. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a file called worker. Now, you can think of a worker as like another thread, right? So now the idea basically is that given the fact that JavaScript is single threaded, it can't do both the computationally expensive work and actually also render things on screen, the idea is we kind of have to have a way to offload that work to somebody else. And that's exactly what the worker is. The worker is a way to sort of offload the sort of um, computationally expensive work to sort of free up the main thread to actually be able to deal with UI interactions. Let me show you what I mean by that. So basically the worker thread and the main thread can actually communicate to each other using messages. So inside of a worker, you can't access this. The way that you can typically access yourself is by using the keyword self, or alternatively, you can just sort of leave it out altogether and then just reference the sort of global functions that exist within the worker. And two such global functions that pretty much exist within the worker, one of them is on message, which is basically like the event that the worker can listen out for for whenever it's gonna be getting any sort of messages sent to it from the main thread. And I'm soon gonna show you how the main thread will go ahead and send those messages to the worker. And then also what it has is the actual post message function that it can then use to send messages back from itself back to the worker. Now, if you've ever used like iframes or sort of sub windows, this is sort of a similar concept, except here we're in a worker. And the reason why that matters is because since we're in a worker, we don't actually have access to the DOM. So just like in an iframe, you actually do have access to the DOM because you're effectively just like a sort of another entire window within a window. You kind of like window inception. Here you don't have that. Here you're literally just 
a piece of Java. So it's sort of just a little thread that lets you do work, but you don't actually have access to the DOM. So any sort of thing that you want to do based, you know, to the DOM through the worker has to go through the actual message chain using the post message function that we have that exists within the worker to go ahead and send the message back to the main thread. So here, all we're doing is we're pretty much taking this, you know, same exact bit of logic that we had right over here. We're basically taking this sort of expensive for loop and we're just going to have it happen here inside of the actual worker. Let's go back to the main thread now to our script.js and see how that file now is going to go ahead and take advantage of the fact that there's a worker that can actually do this work for us. So let's do that now. Okay, so as you can see, the code to get this to work is really minimal. All we're really doing is we're pretty much creating a variable called my worker, and we get this variable by newing up the worker constructor function. And to this function, we're pretty much passing in the name of our worker file. So since the name of the file is worker.js, that's what we're going to go ahead and pass into this worker constructor called right over here. And now my worker actually represents our worker thread. So now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and send messages to our thread as well as listen messages, as well as listen now to four messages that are going to be coming to us from our thread. So here we have my worker that post message. We're going to go ahead and post a message to the worker to tell it to do some work. In this case, the actual message doesn't really matter because we're not really, really, really listening out for the different types of messages. But of course, you can send a different message. You can say, do this type of work, do that type of work, do this, do that. So based on whatever message you can be sending over here, you can go ahead and listen out for different messages within your worker. And then based on that sort of fork your logic. But of course, in this case, we're not doing that because we're just doing the one bit of work. So the actual message that we're sending is completely irrelevant and it's totally arbitrary. So then basically um, at that point, once we actually go ahead and tell the worker to do work, now this event handler, the one sort of we're listening after the on message event. So now the event handler is going to go ahead and start running. It's going to go ahead and do the for loop. Once that's done, it's going to go ahead and post the final result back to the main thread. The main thread is then going to have an event listener of, of its own on message to basically listen after the my worker that on message. When the worker is sending back a message to itself, its own function called its own event handler is now going to run. And all this event handler is going to do right now it's pretty much grab the output h1 and then go ahead and take the data that is being sent to us from the worker which is going to be in the form of event.data and then go ahead and append that to our html of our h1 so let's now go ahead and see this in action to see the difference between you know what happens when you do have a worker and what happens when you don't have a worker. okay so let's click on the click me button to kind of set up the work and now let's go ahead and try to click on this try to click me button, which previously didn't actually allow us to see the actual output until the work was done. Now when I click on it, however, we already get the random message that's being outputted, even though the work was still in the middle of being processed. And now as you can see, the actual worker is done doing our processing and it sent the final result back to our main thread. And we actually have the output of whatever that number is on screen. And that's pretty much the power of using web workers. Well, that does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week in another video. Perfect.